Coach Hargett, you got a, a new uh, mini clinic for us on some of your S calls. Uh, let's do part one. Hey, uh, this is a name of a seed company in California, by the way. It's my favorite hat. It's not what you think. Just letting everybody know that. Let's I'd like go. To clarify that. <laughs> All right, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at our S call concepts. Uh, the only S call concept we left out is Scorpion, and I'm gonna get into that here in a few minutes. But the main reason I wanted to show you this today is I wanna to introduce two new man beating S call RPOs that we're gonna add for the 2018 season that we call Spear and Squirrel. So we're gonna be taking a look at those here. All right, coaches, this is not an S call, but I put this film in here to help you out. This is actually part of our quick game menu. We call this Aggie. It is the slot fade that you see everybody in college football talking about and posting clips of. We've been running this for about four or five years now. We call it a taper fade, T-A-P-E-R, taper fade. And here's what we're doing. The slot's taking two steps up the field, and on his third step, he is fading to the numbers as fast as he can. Number one is gonna run three steps at his corner's outside shoulder, and as soon as he hits three steps, he's going to dip, rip, and win inside and run to grass. So again, we're just exchanging routes. And I put this film on there because it's a great way, again, to show you how to defeat man coverage. Okay, good. They didn't exchange very well right there. They actually blew the coverage. Okay, so that's, that Z receiver would have sat it down and basically turned it into almost a revolver concept right there. He would have just sat it right there. And the two guys I've got out there are young DBs. They didn't understand how to exchange that coverage. But that's a pretty good route exchange by my two guys. You can see one's fading and one's slanting. We're just creating that late uh, scissors action. Again, we want to exchange those stems. You can see what we're doing to the linebacker's feet. He almost turns a circle with his feet out there. So there's a two-by-two two Aggie concept. We'll let that one play out and go on to the next one. All right, here's another two-by-two two clip of Aggie. Let's let it play. We'll just talk over it. Okay, great job winning inside on the slant right there. You can see this is what we want. We want blown man coverage. They're supposed to be in man. We see this all the time. The linebacker stays too long with the taper fade. Okay, the Z receiver does a great job with his hands and feet working together. He gets inside on the slant. We would have thrown that slant every time. As soon as we see the R2 defenders back, we know we can throw that slant coming from outside. And right there, boom. We'd have got that ball, just thrown it right now. Let him make a catch and go. The taper fade is going a little bit wide. He should probably turn up just a little bit sooner. His head's not quite around as fast. He should be going right there where the cursor's at. Okay, getting up the field, he's actually a little wide. We don't have lines down out there, so it's a little hard for him to tell. Okay, but you want him to really stay on the top of the numbers. He doesn't have to fade to him quick. Okay, now we're putting a three-by-one structure out here. The only thing we're adding is a flat route by number three. So everything is still the same. One's still going to work outside, back to in. We're still going to run the taper fade from number two. And now number three is just going to hit the flat. You can see again, if they're man and one and two and they're trying to bracket number three with the mic and the safety and that sort of stuff, uh, this becomes very problematic for them. All right, let's go ahead and play this. See the relationship here. You get people that are trying to read one to two and all that stuff. That's pretty easy. They forget about the flat route. You just throw the flat route out there. Obviously, you can throw the taper fade over the top and take your home run shot if that's what you want to do. But a lot of times, they'll forget about that tight end guy or that number three guy, and you just flip the ball out there in the flat, and he'll go run and get you the 10 yards that you want. Okay, so it's a pretty easy concept. Okay, works against zone, uh, probably a little better against man coverage, but it's part of our quick game menu. We'll run it as an RPO, and we'll run it as a traditional, just straight uh, quick game pass. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, another three by one Aggie clip here. Let's go ahead and play it out. You can see we got man coverage by number one. Okay, he's tight in his face. We went on that man coverage. As soon as we went on that man coverage, there's the slant right there. Now, honestly, you've probably got a winner in all three places. That taper fade probably outruns that linebacker if you put a good ball up there. The slant has won with his footwork. He's already open right now. To me, he's wide open. Just keep running the grass and you'll win. He just gives a little jab step. His corner over stretches. Look at that hand. That hand comes across. I'd prefer a rip there instead of a swim, but he gets away with it. He gets his head across. As soon as his head and his hips get across, it's done. Okay, he just runs the grass. He's wide open the whole way right now. The flat route, you could have hit that in transit. There's no way either of those guys are going to come off that coverage and pick up the flat. 
If they manned all three, you would have had the linebacker running underneath that trying to cover the tight end, and it would have made an even bigger play to throw it to the Z receiver on that slant route. So it's a great way to attack man coverage. Uh, like I said, we've been doing it pretty consistently since about 2013, I think. Uh, it's been a pretty good play for